Before I could go any further with this engine swap, we first had to move my 7,000 pound plus van into the carport so we'd have somewhere dry to work near all the tools and equipment we would need for these next stages. This required some creative towing on my dad's part because the driveway is slightly uphill. Good morning, Frank. Do you want to have a breakfast treat? Do you want the treat for breakfast? How's that? Well, good morning. Uh, today is the day we're gonna try to pull the engine out of the van. It's a Saturday, so my dad's not working and we can work on the van together. Yesterday, we pushed and towed my van into the carport so it could dry out because it was raining pretty bad and it's still raining. We don't really wanna lay in the wet grass to do this, so yeah. It's nice, we're in here. Um, and yeah, hopefully it goes as smooth as something as difficult as this can go because the engine placement in a van is not in a convenient place just to lift it out. It's kind of like in and down and back. So you kind of have to like this type of motion um, with something that is several hundred pounds. <laughs> That's perfect. First thing, I think got to head off. I am going to be sleeping at a jaunty angle. Come on, get off. There we go. Okay, the wire is off. Ooh. or 61.5 millimeters yeah So the first one and most important to take out are these lower ones that are tucked away um, right in here. Lower, yeah, right in that pocket. Feel it? If you're on the ramp, you've gone too far. Here? Yes, those are the hard ones. Okay, so I got the two lower ones and okay. there's two upper ones, but where's the other two? So come here. There you are, like but but right here by the engine mount, you'll see a wrench sitting on a engine bolt. Mounting bolt. Mounting bolt. Does that mean we're we're free? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh. 
Oh shit. And we're out. <laughs> well, now that we have this uh, old engine out of the van, it's time to do the extremely fun job of cleaning all the greasy, nasty parts that I took off over the last few days. Well, good morning. Uh, <laughs> I've just been <gasps> spilling coffee. <laughs> oh, I've just been uh, sitting here uh, casually scraping built up grease and dirt from the edge of the transmission so that we don't contaminate the new engine when we put it on. Oh, I get a letter. A receipt, you mean? <laughs> so it says one distributor mounting, one fuel pump, one intake manifold, one o-ring, one oil cooler, oil filter, oil pan, oil pen drain plug, oil pump retainer, two silicone gaskets, one timing cover, one timing cover seal. Oh, that's what we need. So I scrape off this big hunk of rubber here. It's a piece of rubber that's wrapped around and it's just glued in the corners. But I take it off? Absolutely. Okay. We'll give it a wash and see if it's scraped enough. Okay. Why are you like this? Where did the other two go? No problem with that. Okay, that's it. Are you trying with a five eighths? I'm trying with a seven. You <laughs> fell Once again. Ah! Uh, a metric motor. Oh, I have a metric bumper. <laughs> metric body panels. And you can hold the corner of the block and try against this. Okay, another way mm. of coming. Yeah. See what I've just done? Yeah. You know what we should have done? Just to make life 
interesting. Because you should have put a Ford or a Dodge motor in this. I thought you wanted to go into the woods and be able to get back up. <laughs> I've appointed Frank's supervisor and he's doing a great job of it, just staying out of the way and keeping an eye on everything from the edge of the shop. So I really appreciate his efforts on this project and he was great moral support with me while I spend what felt like so much time cleaning this intake. We do hope to replace it someday with a different intake so I can have a different fueling system so it's less computerized and I won't have some of the issues I've had in the past. But for now, it's just getting a deep clean, <laughs> um, which really was quite a stretch on my attention span. But there was lots of different parts to focus on cleaning and we got pretty lucky that all the bolts and parts we needed to take off came off without breaking and we didn't have to resort to any sort of drastic extraction measures. So I would say overall this went about as well as we could have possibly hoped for. It is the end of day four on the project. The first two days I worked by myself, stripping parts off the engine. The third day yesterday, my dad and I finished stripping the parts and getting the engine out of the van. And today we spent all day, the two of us, uh, cleaning parts and stuff. So I did a lot of the like nasty, greasy, scrapey things. <laughs> And a little bit of part removal still, like little just the last odds and ends. And he was using the pressure washer and the metal brush on the wheel and all sorts of chemicals and stuff to just yeah, just get everything ready to go back together. So we got the old engine off the hoist and out of the way. So next time we work on it, we will be starting to reassemble. The new engine because it's just a short block so we have quite a lot of parts from engine one to put on the new engine and then get it in the van and then just keep building from there so i'm gonna go for a little adventure frank and you're gonna stay here and be cozy in bed you're so cute well, I am back here at the rail trail for another adventure. I had my dad drop me off on his way to work. And uh, it's going to be an interesting day because I'm doing something I haven't done in quite a while. I have borrowed my mom's bike and helmet and uh, we're going to see what it's like riding a bike. Uh, my first impression is that it's kind of chilly. It's a chilly morning, but yeah, I don't really walk fast enough to make wind, so my eyes are watering <sighs> and I can feel my core getting warm, but I don't want to take off my sweater because I know my arms will be so cold. So that's definitely different uh, than the walking experience. Oh. Not the most comfortable. Oh, okay, too fast, too fast. That's not for me. Oh boy.
I am about a little under two hours into this ride and I've gone 27 kilometers already. Um, the riding is easy physically, uh, except the, like the little bit on the road because it was more of a hill than the rail trail. Uh, I felt that right away, <laughs> but my ass it hurts so much already. Oh, I was like wincing these last couple kilometers anytime there was like a bit of a bump. So I am learning to just lift myself off the seat when there's bumpy sections, but I'm pretty sure that if I turn around here, by the time I get back, uh, it's going to feel like a big day, um, at least in some parts of my body. <laughs> Well, I am back at the trailhead where my dad dropped me off this morning. I'm really sore. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I rode a little over 50 kilometers and uh, that's a long time to be sitting on a bike when you haven't sat on a bike in years. So I think I'll be feeling this for a few days, <laughs> but I had a really fun time. I have some mixed feelings about biking because it was enjoyable, but I felt like everything just went by so fast and I didn't really enjoy my surroundings the same way I do hiking. So yeah, it's just different and would take a bit of getting used to, to to be able to make the most of my experience when I'm on a bike. But yeah, I got recognized again. I don't know what's up with this trail, but I've never been recognized anywhere. Now two different trips on this trail and people say hi to me. So that was really fun. I hope you enjoyed coming along for the second part of this engine swap series. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already. I really appreciate you watching and we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.